Hi, my name is Rob Arnfield and I'm from Western University in London, Ontario, Canada and myself and Dr. Atul Jadka, an internal medicine resident at Western University, will now take you on a tour of point of care transesophageal echocardiography. For insertion, we generally, as we will show you in vivo shortly, uh, the surface, uh, the crystals, so the, the surface the crystals are on, which is a flat surface, will face the floor of the mouth upon insertion, and that will ensure the appropriate location in the patient. With this transducer being long and endoscopic, we have the, we can advance the transducer or withdraw the transducer. We can also rotate it on its own longitudinal axis. The two wheels, Technically, we just call them the big wheel and the small wheel. The big wheel, which is the one you'll use most commonly for goal-directed TEE, will control flexion of the transducer in the anterior and posterior planes. You'll see here that clockwise rotation results in what's called anti-flexion, the folding of the ultrasound crystal face towards the probe, and counterclockwise movement will result in retroflexion. The small wheel controls lateral flexion, which you can see moving side to side, used generally less frequently than the uh, anti and retroflexing features. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, TEE is enabled in a multi-beam fashion by uh, two buttons on the transducer handle, which control the angle of the ultrasound beam, and we'll see this on the simulator momentarily what this means, but ultimately toggling between uh, different probe angles or multi-beam angles is afforded by the different buttons here. So typically the lower button will increase the angle from zero up to 180, and the top button will decrease the angle uh, from the position you're at. You can appreciate on the augmented reality, it behaves uh, somewhat like an axial cut perpendicular to the patient's chest. So it'll come straight out like that or straight out through the chest like this. And you can appreciate that on the augmented reality. And we can see as I use the multi-beam feature, how that beam will actually change as it changes from zero degrees to 90 degrees, and then that 180 degrees is really just going to be a mirror image of the zero degree position. So we will now do a goal-directed transesophageal echocardiogram to resolve the etiology of shock in this patient. This will be similar to what can be done easily in any acute care environment, including the emergency department, the ICU, the perioperative environment, anywhere where you have a critically ill patient where transthoracic windows are insufficient, as is the case in this patient, or where perhaps you have advanced indications for more higher complexity point of care echo. But again, the scope of today is going to demonstrate the ease, rapidity, and scope of a four-view goal-directed TEE. We'll start by probe insertion, which with the help of a trusty assistant, we will uh, find the midline of the mouth and we will slowly insert the transducer with the help of a bit of a jaw thrust. And we find ourselves a bit of resistance halfway down through the oropharynx. I've successfully passed the oropharynx. I'm now seeing something on the screen as I advance down. I'll actually pass through the great vessels in the short axis and eventually the heart in the midesophageal four chamber plane will be what comes to view. The crystals are at zero degrees, no manipulation of the multi-beam function, and we're in the midesophagus. So I've advanced the probe to the midesophagus. The default view is the midesophageal four chamber view, which you see here. The structures of interest are left atrium, left ventricle, mitral valve, right ventricle, right atrium, tricuspid valve, pericardial space. Very similar to the apical four chamber view, in transthoracic. And from this point of view in the metasophagus, we're going to move the multi-beam crystals to mimic the long axis, and that is obtained around 130, 140 degrees. So I'm going to press these buttons here. You'll see the protractor symbol in the upper left change, and you'll see the structures on the screen change as we flip the probe around uh, to around 130, 140 and we start to see the aortic valve come in view. We start to see the uh, right ventricular outflow tract come into view. At this stage, I'm a little bit unhappy with the way the um, 
the infralateral wall looks, so I'm gonna, I just withdrew the transducer a little bit to try and find a different acoustic window. Of note, in this patient, we're contending with an NG tube, which is interfering a little bit with our uh, image quality. And so here we can see the structures of interest are the left atrium, the left ventricle, the aortic valve, ascending aorta, and the mitral valve, as well as the RVOT on screen right, and the pericardium again with that small pericardial effusion as seen earlier. For those of you familiar with transthoracic imaging, this is basically a mirror image of the parasternal long axis view and its structures. So any interpretation you would do on that view, you can easily transfer to skills with this view. From here, we have two options. Uh, the third view, which I favor, is still in the mid-esophagus and is the, uh, the bicable view, or really a view of the superior vena cava. And uh, I'm gonna to choose to do that one next, which is at 90 degrees or so. So I'm pressing the buttons again on the multi-beam. I'm going, now going to rotate the entire transducer clockwise, which moves it towards uh, the patient's right side. And in so doing, I unmask the thin, very pliable tubular structure on screen right, which is the SVC. And here I can see it, and it's very tricky. You gotta sort of fine tune the, the, the clockwise, counterclockwise turning of the, uh, of the transducer. Here we see the SVC connecting to the right atrium with the tricuspid valve flopping into the near field the interatrial septum in the near field, and then the left atrium, which forms the acoustic window of all your mid-esophageal views. So from the bicable view, I will now finish the fourth view of the goal-directed echo by going into the stomach. I will put my crystals back for multi-beam back to zero degrees, and you can see here I'm in the mid-esophagus with uh, mid-esophageal five-chamber view now, similar to the four-chamber, and this is the view you always wanna go back to if you ever get lost in TE. I'm now going to make sure my probe is neutral, the, the large wheels are not flexed. I'm now going to advance down into the stomach. As I advance, we'll pass by the coronary sinus, passing along the back of the heart, which is a symbol for the GE junction. You can see it here. So I know I'm at the GE junction right now. So I'm gonna push a little bit farther in until I either see some liver or rugae in the near field, which I see now. And now I have the heart in plane, but I don't, in view, but I don't have the plane I want. And the key here is now to use this large wheel to use uh, clockwise rotation, and that will introduce anti-flexion, so flexion of the beam to bring out the mid-level of the left ventricle. I'm going to decrease my depth, and you can see the papillary muscles in view, and here is your ideal view for assessing LV function uh, in the short axis. And we can see here the LV function is uh, generally preserved, except for the septum, which appears a bit hypokinetic. We can. Uh, then actually lock the uh, probe in this position and set it in, on an IV pole, for instance. And now we have an anatomic monitor during our resuscitation where we can carry on with uh, managing the patient, but always have an echocardiogram that we can defer back to in real time. And so that concludes the four view goal directed approach uh, that we endorse for quick resuscitative questions and shock differentiation.